And you know, I think another thing that I really feel uh, when it and it comes to parents when they talk about picky eaters and when they're pointing fingers back at their kids, yeah. I want to tell the parents model, model eating healthy, model drinking water. You know, yeah. if you are doing it, uh, your kids are watching it. Yeah. yeah, and it takes it takes more than ten to fifteen tries for the kid to develop a taste. Right. So it's not going to magically happen. If your kid is like, oh, I can't have broccoli, try it at least 15 times before giving it up. Right. You know, don't be like, oh, I tried two times. I tried, you know, four weeks and he wouldn't do it. Yeah. But I think those decisions lie more on the parents than yeah. the kids. Hello everyone, I'm Shweta Agni and thank you for tuning back in. Uh, welcome to our summer speaker series and today we have a very interesting topic to discuss. Uh, yes, we'll be talking about kids nutrition and I'm so glad to have Ankita here with us today. She's a kids nutrition expert and she's also co-founder for Happy to be Healthy which is a startup focused on mainly children nutrition and also creating awareness around health and wellness. So thank you so much Ankita for joining us today. Welcome to our chat. Hi, Shweta. Thank you. I think this is such a noble work, you know, putting all the health practitioners to, uh, together in one platform. I learned so much from all the other guests that you've had. So I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, yes. Yeah, so let's just dive in. So like I said, uh, we were talking about uh, kids nutrition and especially now that you have summer vacation going on and few days, last few days of vacation before the school starts off. So uh, one question that moms are always worried about is nutrition with respect to kids, like what to make, what not to make. And then the first question that they always have is like picky eaters. You always have those in homes, even like picky adults for that matter. So, right. so how do you go about like, what's your approach when it comes to uh, handling kids who are very picky about what they eat and how do moms go about managing around that? You know, um, <clears throat> Shweta, I always feel that with kids and parents, you know, I, I think sometimes I feel I want to put more pressure on the parents' behaviors when it comes to picky eaters more than the child itself. True. And so I do a lot of workshops around nutrition for children and and sometimes I do it pairing with adults, right? I pair pair them with the parents so that the parents are also part of the workshop and they kind of like, it's, it's like a family which comes together, right? To make yes. any behavioral changes in the house. Yep. And I always like to tell the parents that think about um, change, you know, um, looking at it as a metabolic, changing your metabolic cravings, right? So when you're approaching, looking at food, think about how you're going to crave for the good stuff, you know, because I think you're constantly trying to tell yourself, oh, I don't want to crave for a chocolate chip cookie or reach out for the chocolate or the cake that is sitting in the fridge, right? Yeah. Uh, you want to, you want to program that for the kids so that it's kind of easier, Right. Yeah. And I always uh, feel that the parents need to agree that we eat food for three things. Right. We are eating our food because we want to grow. Uh, we eat it for pleasure. And that's like, I think, a little problematic here because I think all our celebrations are revolving around food. If we yeah. are celebrating birthdays, we're celebrating. Yeah, it's such a big part, right? Like food. Yeah. I don't know. You live to eat or eat to live. It's the dilemma there. I know. So any yeah. kind of celebration that we are indulging in is food. And yeah. with that also comes a big responsibility on parents that what are you celebrating with? You mm -hmm. know, that's, that's again, you're shaping your food desires, the craving, the good food, right? And then I always want to say, okay, food is also medicinal. So I want the kids also to know that every time you're eating something, think of its benefits, right? It's yeah helping you grow it's helping you get better right and uh, when it comes to picky eaters I feel for parents um, avoid the three the three no's which is mm -hmm. the high fructose corn syrup right the yeah. hydrogenated or the man-made fat right that we want to avoid yes. we want to avoid any colors any additives right and how the food market industry calls it the natural flavoring yeah it's, you know just a gimmick it's it means nothing. The natural flavoring, you know, a natural flavoring of a blueberry granola bar doesn't mean that they have, you know, blueberry, fresh blueberry crushed, 
and true and yeah yeah <laughs> no, those labels it can be like so distracting you would feel oh it has blueberry extract so it would be something yeah. that's really uh, good then like yeah so i feel that you know if you want 90% of your battle if you can just avoid those three no nos right you're staying away from those three big nos you won 90% of the battle so you're not feeding anything really junky to your child right. now it comes to okay what are you going to actually feed your kid right when it comes to fruits and veggies and i think my approach is like talk to the kid but again then uh, my approach is to do a camouflaging you know just camouflage the food but let the kid know that you're camouflaging mm, because you want right. to change the wisdom of their body right you don't want to hide it and not even tell the kid that you did it let your kid know that you have a zucchini in your chocolate cake yeah right it's okay give empower the kid to know that okay you if you don't like bell peppers you don't like the skin of your bell pepper completely fine how about we give it a try by you know making it into a soup or you know how should i like to give you an example like uh, for my pizza sauce my my own son doesn't like the skin of the bell pepper right he yeah. finds it slimy and he just doesn't like it but he's perfectly fine by putting in the water mix with his tomato paste and tomatoes and blending it together into a healthy pizza sauce oh so adding zucchini to your tomato sauce that yes. that's a good idea and red bell peppers like red bell peppers have double the vitamin c of orange mm-hmm. right so right. he knows that and i'm like you know why let's let's try it and he's like well that's fine with all the spices and the tomatoes in it he can't even taste it right like, i'm fine with it so every time we make a pizza sauce we have zucchini Mm-hmm. and we have the fiber we have the skin of the zucchini plus we have the whole red bell pepper oh nice sauce. and he loves it now we have it dipping it we have it as pasta sauce we have it as pizza sauce sometimes we make garlic bread and we dip it with that sauce and it's you know it's he knows that he's camouflaged his veggies in it but okay. he doesn't stress about and i i make my table a happy place to eat because i feel that i'm not like you know fretting over the fact that oh each of us ever each is a kini you know it's yeah a- so- i love that idea of yours like camouflaging things and knowing having the kids know themselves like this is what is yeah. i mean having it come from them rather than you forcing it on them yeah. okay have this 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 and not having like a fight over it but having yeah. like something that they'll continue to do with themselves yeah. okay and you know i think another thing which i really feel uh, when it and it comes to parents when they talk about picky eaters and when they're pointing fingers back at their kids yes. i want to tell the parents model model eating healthy model drinking water you know yes. if you are doing it uh, your kids are watching it yeah. yeah and it takes it takes more than 10 to 15 tries for the kid to develop a taste right yes. so it's not going to magically happen if your kid is like oh i can't have broccoli try it at least 15 times before giving it up right. you know don't be like oh i tried two times i tried you know four weeks and he wouldn't do it yeah. but i think those decisions lie more on the parents than yeah. the kids yeah know? modeling is like you said so so important like there's a saying i don't remember the exact words but it says like more of uh, rather than uh, telling kids what to do like you be the model for them they learn more by looking around like looking at you what is to be done then listening mm-hmm. to okay do this do this do this so they are not going to right. do that after right. a certain point like till they are small maybe they listen but after some time yeah. they are not going to listen to no me. no and you know i'll give you an example for yeah for another example for babies you know sometimes you know we think oh we're going to start shaping uh, their food taste when they're a little older but i like to believe that do it as early as you can right for little toddlers for babies um you know uh, it's very convenient that we have those vegetable puff things which come in a canister uh-huh. and, you know and they have like big bowls written that they're veggies right yeah. and it's so easy to just put it down and they're just munchies and the kids feel that okay that's that's good food for me so it's in a chip format right mm-hmm. it's it's closer mm-hmm. to those kinds it's not just carrots or broccolis or yeah. corn you know or or as a matter of fact lentils right you know just dry lentils that you know you steam it season it and they can have it or just right. beans right finger foods right finger food you won't take an option for that but if you're if you have taken a simpler option as a parent where you're using all those ready made puffs veggie yeah. puff uh, so you are shaping your child's taste at a very early age right, right. 
So the so it now after a few years when you're complaining, that yeah, like, it doesn't really out. add up, right? Yeah, it's like you <laughs> you gave it to them, and then those are the options they had. So yeah, so having them really like get to know what the real fruits, vegetables, pulses, mm. grains, things are, rather than just starting yes. off their whole nutrition journey with just looking at those packaged foods, even though if they say it's like oh, healthy, yeah. natural, and extract and mm-hmm. All blah 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 things that they mentioned. I think you yeah. said the right word, Shweta. You said the real word, right? Yeah, it the real people, food. <laughs> real food. Feed them yeah. the real food and don't give them the option that don't tell them that there is, you know, veggie puffs. No, no, there's no veggie puff. There's veggies. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So those also exist. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Since you mentioned about baby food, like I had one of our audience asked us about. Uh, uh, like what could be um, your suggestion for like like to start off with? So when you are uh, when the babies they're transitioning from the liquid diet to like solid foods, right. uh, what could be a diet for them? Like maybe like a nine ten month old baby. What for, what should like mommy start off with? Uh, you know, Shweta, uh, this is a delicate because I think being as health coaches versus yeah. nutrition and nutritionists, we want to we want to uh, not you know get into like suggesting. But I think, like we discussed, I think the more we keep the food real, and uh-huh. how we keep you know the food that we are eating, we are modeling that food. We are offering the same food right. to our kids. Mm-hmm. You know, we keep if you're keeping bearing that in mind that you know you're going to encourage your kid to know that this is real food. Mm-hmm. And this is what we eat to grow up right. and that is what the kid is going to you know learn to be rather than telling the kid oh you know you eat something different i eat something different no yeah it doesn't very, work that way yep, yep very very stark right yeah like you said like that's that's really nice like early on now uh, having them like expose them to like different yeah. foods different tastes variety of stuff colorful stuff Kids yeah, love colors, yeah. I know, so that way you they can like, colors. start like, off with like good healthy yeah. stuff around. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's nice. So, so coming back to like the current scenario right now, so we have this COVID thing going on and then everybody's working from home with kids. So mm-hmm. on those lines, like uh, what kind of, uh, uh, you have any suggestions for like what kind of food preps or some recipes or something that you would like to share with respect? Because I know schools are starting off in a week. Mm-hmm. So even though you don't have the whole dilemma of uh, packing tiffins, but then you still have to think of uh, what to make for breakfast, lunch and dinner, keeping aside, I mean, along with the work thing going on and keeping exactly. in mind the taste and the demands of the kids too. Right. So yeah, so like a- any tips and tricks that what could be yeah, any so recipes? I, um... Twitter, I personally like, I believe that meal prepping comes number one to me because I think as parents, if we don't have the meal prepping technique down for ourselves, it's harder to feed the family, you know, and I think more or less mothers are somehow deemed to be doing that, you know, so I, I, I encourage everybody to actually get lots of mason jars. They work so well. And just cut up all your veggies. Um, one one thing that I personally use is I kind of look at my week when I'm ordering my groceries is I look for five veggies that I will do for lunch. And mm-hmm. I do five different veggies that I can do for my stir fries uh, for the evening. So I kind mm-hmm. of sort my veggies into five and five. And I order those kind of veggies. And okay. I, you know, I like to eat... Uh, Indian desi khana for my lunch versus uh, I like to do like stir fries and like quick food for dinner. For dinner. Okay. For dinner. So for example, I would always like make, uh, oh, you know, first I would like chop them up, put them in the different mason jars and that way it's just simpler, washed, dried, cut, and they're all stored in mason jars. So it's easier okay. to pick, look at what we want to eat. Uh, the other thing I like to do is like I like to sort out my lentils and be- beans also weekly. So okay. if I would do like Wednesday, I like to do my beans. So I would pick one of the beans from, you know, black eyed peas from Rajma kidney beans or yeah. peas. or So I do Wednesdays is a standardized beans day. So I okay. know every Wednesday there has to be some beans. Some okay. beans. So, so on Tuesday night, I know wh- what to soak. To like soak yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. just decided, okay, today is best bean day. <laughs> right, yeah, that, that's the thing. You have to remember to like soak right. and uh, do all those things. Like, right. uh, so Tuesdays are taco days for us at home because my kids right. 
tacos. So we have like a standardized way that, okay, let's do tacos on Tuesday. And uh, for tacos, then, you know, I'll always have, okay, standardized. We have these all veggies that go on taco. And if we like to eat chicken or some kind of soy uh, or tofu marinated in it, then mm. I know that every Tuesday, Monday, I have to prep for that. So mm -hmm. I don't spend that extra time thinking every day, okay, what, what to cook. Okay. You know, I already have things blocked away. Mm -hmm. uh, so like I like to get my salmon twice uh, twice a week I like to feed my family salmon for the good omega-3s nice. so I chalk out that okay you know Monday nights and Friday nights would be a salmon dinner so oh, those cool. are standardized and then the salads go with it or different breads or different pastas depending on what kids like right. but I have a major chunk planned um, that's, that's another, good. Yeah. The, another tip for my, I eat, uh, we do eat non-veg at home. So mm -hmm. what I do is like, I like to get four different varieties of cuts of lean meat. So whether it's okay. chicken or fish and I get it at the same time. So I order it every Friday evening. I order mm -hmm. my grocery from actually Whole Foods Prime. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Online is like so easy. And maybe even after COVID, I'm going to stick with the online ordering. Yeah, thing I so absolutely. Yes. So I, I, that's what I do. I order my portions and I, what I do is like I clean them, chop them okay. and I marinate all the four, uh, uh, four lean meats together. Like okay. in different, it's a different marination for, so four, four different lean meats, cuts, and I would marinate it differently. So one could be yogurt based, one could be like a little, you know, English based, uh, yeah. Thai, whatever. Oh, like know, different flavor kind of thing. Yeah. So, oh, nice. yeah, so I marinate it and I seal it in a glass jar, again, a glass bowl, and I don't freeze them. I actually just leave them in the fridge. Okay. And I know that I have to just grill them or you know saute them or make a curry out of it you know okay. to do that and okay. curries too i and i like to do my curry separate and my marination separate so okay uh, every week i kind of um for my so i have a list going on so with the curries i would do like if i want to do like a uh, butter butter chicken curry right uh -huh. i yeah. like to substitute it i like to think in my mind that okay i'm not going to add whole cream to it so what is the other option? So I was like, okay, I'm going to make it into a cashew sauce, make it more okay. for the family. Uh -huh. so, so in a week, if I decide, okay, this week, I'm going to do an onion tomato gravy, a cashew sauce gravy, right. pesto or something, right? Going with it. And I'll, yeah. I'll prep the curries ahead of time too. Mm -hmm. And I put them again in mason jars and put them away. And oh, sometimes okay. freeze those too. So if I'm making like a cashew coconut gravy, I will make uh, a batch worth for three or four times and mm -hmm. keep one out and three in the refrigerator. In the yeah, freezer. freezer, yeah. So that way my work is simpler, you know, yeah. but I, I am like, I am totally, totally in favor. I tell my, you know, clients, I tell all the moms, all the dads, I was like, please meal prep. Yeah. Life is easier. It is less stressful for the entire family to have meal prep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it helps, right? Because like you mentioned, you make a big batch. So there's less cleaning involved. You know what exactly needs to be ordered. You have things handy and like you can quickly put things together rather than like yeah. on the, those particular work days when you're like busy, you don't have to like, okay, just because I don't have anything to eat or like prep something yeah. or make an elaborate spend like an hour or two making or prepping for that on that day. Right. Then that really like you would then think of okay let's order something or do that yeah. And then, yeah so yeah. those options always come faster to you at those times yeah. true and you know when it now especially when school's starting Shweta so what I like to do is like I like to have my kids give me uh, some options for their lunch because everybody's busy busy during lunchtime right parents yeah. are working kids are busy at school right. and the timings are not matching right everybody's exactly. eating at a different time even though everybody's home yeah. So what I like to do is like, you know, I, I want to take down their orders on Friday when I'm ordering my groceries, like, what would you like? So they'll give me a few options here and there. Okay. And I, I get those options ready and I note it down and put it on the fridge that, okay, Monday, Tuesday, Monday through Friday, this is for lunch. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> it's just well, no it's, great. It's, it's a good practice actually. Yeah. Like right. some kind of a structure that way, I think it would be really yeah. helpful. I mean, this takes some, some being proactive uh, on yeah. that end but yeah 
that would be really helpful. Yeah, you know how we learned how, uh, well, you know, I know you're a health coach like me too. You know how we learned to make those smart goals, you know, yes. so, you know, be very specific, be very, you know, they have to be measured. So you're you're ordering the right quantities you're not overstocking yeah. your fridge right it's yes. harder the groceries come in and everybody's like oh my god now you have to like store it <laughs> yeah i often have i think the other day i was just like there was something i took a picture of my fridge and i had to show some item on that but then what people noticed was my fridge looked like almost empty because they could see everything oh. <laughs> like, there's no place in my fridge i'm like oh my god that's one thing i really avoid because yeah you keep dumping things and then things are lying behind then they go waste you don't even know what's mm-hmm. there in your fridge so so yeah. that's i think another advantage when it comes to like meal prepping you know exactly what's in the fridge what's you're not ordering it? extra you're not right. wasting stuff again right. so, yeah right. and then you know sometimes you don't even want to overcook it because sometimes there is yeah. something lying in the fridge and then nobody's going to eat it you know yeah. and it, you know, and then it just goes to waste because nobody's eating it. And sometimes I'm the only one eating it. <laughs> that that happens too. <laughs> you don't want to waste stuff again. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm the only one eating this for the last three days. Yes. <laughs> I was yeah, like, everybody needs to, yeah, put it down on a piece of paper what you like to eat. And if you don't like something, then we'll find a way out of it. <laughs> yeah. Or at least, yeah, give it some kind of a, what do you say, a makeover to that dish. Maybe try <laughs> Yeah. And see if that gets yeah. over like during yeah. lunch or dinner somewhere. Same, same for breakfast too, Shweta. So I think um, my house, I think I know four of us who likes to eat one. So if the eggs, like if the omelets have to get made, I make it for two days together. So uh-huh. I don't have, so I make like a big ferrata kind of uh, structure and then, you know, okay. I cut it into the different zone and then I just place it in the fridge that, okay, this is for Mondays and Tuesdays breakfast. You know, so right. everybody knows that breakfast is done. We don't alter breakfast. Right. So choices are given, but I think we need to have, like you said, we need to have more structure. So not choices, not for every single meal. Mm. <laughs> yeah, true. And where we need to have sanity in the kitchen. The kitchen closes. Yeah. <laughs> right. And like, yeah, I, I, I really like that idea of like spending some time over the weekend and like just yes. jotting things down so that you don't like order extra or like some things that you have in the home they come handy when you don't yeah. really have uh, like you may not have ordered but it's there and you oh, okay I can just quickly use this but yes. yeah planning really helps in those ways yeah definitely especially, like, planning, huh? yeah especially with the work from home and then when you yeah. don't have the time <laughs> to really uh, on, on those work days busy work days Yes, so. even marinated, you know, if stuff is marinated and I don't have to get my hands dirty or think, I, it doesn't take much time between calls or, you know, yeah. doing studies. I can just quickly get up, you know, just topple uh, the marination upside down in a pan and cover it and just let it yeah. simmer. But at least we have something healthy to eat rather than reaching out or being hungry and making a wrong choice at that time, yeah. you know. Those so are like those high, high chances, chances of, yeah reaching out to things that you have in the house which may not be i mean they may they may be maybe i mean you would be uh like taking uh action over your hunger for that particular time maybe you'll feel yeah. good for something but definitely not a healthy choice too yeah i i always I know, right and i always encourage everybody to have like strict meal times and strict um uh you know snack time mm-hmm. um moving around the house even for the kids because you want to eat before you get hungry, right? Before you that starvation hits you and then you yes. open the pantry and you're like, okay, two cookies right now, you know? So, yeah. yeah. And I think with kids, that happens so much. You know, they'll come wandering out like, you know, right after lunch. Yeah. You know? but if they just eat lunch and half an hour later, they're out like, oh, I'm hungry. I think, no, no, you're not hungry. You didn't eat well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think yeah, for those times, you really have to be like, be the parent. That, that's what I feel sometimes. You exactly. can't really just give in to uh, all of their things. Yeah. So like, okay, finish, no. have your food first, and then maybe you can try something. Right. And then again, right. like have healthy options available. I think, yeah, if we, if we kind of like, you know, like you're saying, if we become parents at that moment and become very strict parents, we will encourage them to eat their lunch better. Yeah. You know, rather than because they're like, okay, no option. You yeah. know, you're not allowed to come out and like grab a snack yeah, right yeah. after just half an hour into lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so really, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's because we know it's, it's good for their health end of the day. It's not something. Yes. Because yeah. if it's going to like, I mean, all everybody wants like good health for the children. Nobody wants to like, but then, then you're like, 
bent on time and then you'll be like okay just have maybe have this you see how ek se kya farak padta hai but then yeah. those those things should not really yeah. you have to be the parent parent sometimes and i, I hope all the parents who are listening to us they'll be like oh no i shouldn't even ask about the big eater question because we spun it all on them it's like yeah. it's <laughs> yeah no totally I, i i like the way because that's how you started right it's more of having a more of a coaching for parents than having kids and they'll be like okay my kid is not eating what do i give them and that's more of like changing their own kids mindset and mindset for the parents too like how do yeah. i make it more simpler as for the family as a whole and then but i, I love those tips i think the tips that you gave for like prepping uh, i think all the moms would be like really help but they'll find those tips really handy and they can yeah Them. They can start with you know, Shweta. I was thinking they don't have to start doing everything. You know that that's going to get overwhelming. So maybe the first week they can just start with like you know just getting the mason jars and chopping up the first five veggies for your yes. week. You know, yeah. just putting them away. You know, or mm. sometimes having like chopped frozen veggies if you can do that. But at least have it or have like a little timetable going for you that okay, yes. at least my lunch I have it done. you know yeah. start slow or start with breakfast or lunch or dinner and then every week add one more thing to it you know yeah so that way you can yeah you know, go slow with wife. it yeah we don't want you to do everything together right <laughs> true true totally it takes a while to get there you know yes yeah it's it's a matter of practice and meticulously following through right yeah so i i love going to the grocery stores right so yeah. before covid happened i think i used to spend so many hours visiting different grocery stores and now i realize i don't need to do that yeah but <laughs> so you learn right yeah and, yeah totally like i think yeah there's so many new things that we learned with this current scenario as in where you can optimize and what can be done so so that way it's good so t- tell us something more about your workshops like what kind of uh, uh kids workshops you do for of yours so maybe uh okay. they can enroll in those when you have them next coming up yes uh, yes i am very sweet i'm so passionate about my workshops uh so i call them the lean start workshops mm-hmm. and um i offer them like based on um the individual's requirements right so depending on how much time the kids have i place them in those different batches uh what these workshops literally do is kind of break uh, you know it's it's all about show the science mm-hmm. so i like to approach these workshops where i talk literally about science you know so for example if we uh today in the morning i had a workshop which talked all about uh fat you know mm-hmm. and um i asked the kids you know when you hear the word fat uh, what what do you relate it to mm-hmm. and Uh, should I be not surprised the word fat literally has like a negative connotation right yeah. every time you hear the word fat either you're relating it to your body that oh maybe you don't want to get fat or you want to mm-hmm. lose down so kids and i'm talking about teens um who are all the time relating fat to a negative um, yes aspect right Yep. and then uh, you know the other kids talked about some kids said oh it's the bacon you know when i look at bacon i look at it oh fat you know somebody oh. said oh it's the cake you know when i look at anything sweet i'm thinking fat you know so they're relating it they're tra- they're taking the word fat and you know reflecting it on their body weight you yes. know so the workshops are all aiming to tell them okay you know think about fat 60% of your brain tissue is made out of fat Yeah. So you, you need good amount of good fat in your body now that you're growing up, right? Yes. So it's the, it's the grow food, it's the run fast food, right? It's it's the smart brain food that you want to think, you want to associate all these different terminology that our marketing food industry has been throwing out, our society yeah. is throwing out. It's harder for yeah. them, harder for us. Exactly. and i think it's super hard for teens and tweens i think even younger kids like 6 7 years old yeah are. it's it's yeah that's what when you mention like all they could think of fat is like with respect to their body shape or like greasy right. stuff and nothing with respect to why it's like the good thing like yeah. how your brain really needs fat like they don't have no knowledge or education about it no so then so, then you know i kind of like break it down and i i tell them okay you know think about fat in three different ways right think about unsaturated fats saturated fats and trans fats the man made fats 
And, and I think all those three distinctions are so important because uh, our society is living on junk food, right? We're living on packaged food, yeah. uh, fast food, or even if not fast food, we are ordering out a whole lot, right? Yes. Kids are, uh, their taste buds have changed completely, right? Because yeah. they like the craft uh, single pack cheese, which is not very cheap, right? Yeah, if you true. give them a pure cheddar block cheese, they're like, my God. Right. So we've altered their taste buds to that extent, Shweta, that um, I think we need to get back. We need to kind of like take a step back. I want parents to realize that kids need to take a step back. Um, and the workshops are not literally telling you, oh, eat this versus eat that. You know, it's it's okay. You know, you categorize food into traffic light eating. You are like, okay, eat more of this, eat some of this, and eat less of this. So the mm-hmm. trans fat is jumping into those. That okay, you're yeah. craving for McDonald's French fries. You're traveling. You're on the road. Eat it. Yeah. But compare it to how much fat. So the workshop kind of like I show them. You know how much fat it has. So we have like uh, the Crispo, the trans fat box. Uh-huh. And I pick it up and I'm like, okay, you know how many how many teaspoons of fat do you think that one large French fries has? Yeah. And like, well, I don't know half a teaspoon. You know, two teaspoons. Yeah, they would and not then, imagine. Yeah, and then you scoop up, scoop up, and you put it. Yeah. <laughs> in a bowl and show them that fat and they're like oh my god you know that is what i've been eating so i got a very beautiful message from a mom today and she said oh my daughter used to love in and out burgers and no hard feelings you know and no hard feelings for craft or no hard feelings for in and out burgers i must have like enjoy in and out burgers but the frequency of it yeah right and the kids recognizing that okay you know let's have a 90 10 balance or 80 10 80 times 80% 80% of the times you're eating healthy, but mm-hmm. like that, that 10%, okay, once in a while, getting past yeah, exactly. eating into your cravings. And the workshop, you know how I mentioned, uh, it's about shaping your cravings, you know, knowing that, you know, the wisdom of your body. And that, and that kid came out saying, you know, reflected on the wisdom of the body and saying, I don't feel like, you know, yeah. and the mother was like, okay, that was huge. The kid saying, I don't feel like. That, that's a big victory too, coming, big coming out from the kids themselves rather than. Yes. So the whole workshop is designed where, you know, I'm not telling the kids, oh, this is bad. Oh, stop eating. No, no. It's, it's about awakening their own wisdom of their body, right? Knowing the science behind how these different, different fats affect you. Why is it necessary for you? You know, yes. and, and they were shocked that they're like 60 person. I said, yes, 60 person of your brain tissue is fat. So imagine yeah. how healthy when people are saying avocados are good for you. Avocados, you know, the, you keep hearing it. Mm-hmm. right? The kids know that avocados are good for you. They're using avocados in different recipes or in cakes or in smoothies, right? right. But so I want them to tie the link between that, right? Yeah. Tell them, okay, avocados has what kind of fat, right? It has unsaturated fat. That's the kind of fat you need to grow. Yes. Your brain power needs that, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, you want to set yourself for success, especially when you're in school, right? Yes. So yeah. these are the growing ages. So my workshops with I are all designed that way. And I like parents, you know, I love when parents kind of reach out and I am, I tell them I'll work with you because I'm so passionate about getting this out. I don't have like a, you know, big batches going on. I like very small batches of kids coming. I work with their times. When are you available? You know, I want to give you this information, but I want to work with you. Your yeah. time. I want to be receptive. It's not like a big chain of, you know, you know, like a class going on that, okay, you know, like Russian school of maths, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Since you mentioned the classes thing, like I was like surprised, like how come, like along with when the kids, they learn about math and science and everything in school, how really important it is for them to know about nutrition, like yeah. what's good for them and it's I, I really love the fact that you take out so much of your time and you're so passionate about giving that knowledge to kids right. so that they really know what's what's the thing that that's nourishing their body and like yeah. what's taking care of them what's good for their brain what's good for their skin and what's good internally how things like how maybe we shouldn't be eating like the in and out or any burgers on a daily basis even though you like it <laughs> but yeah. just have more of the healthy stuff more and how that would be uh, really beneficial in the long term too, as you grow old and 
as you're like mm-hmm. growing through the ages. So, so, so thank you so much for really taking that time out and mm-hmm. uh, crafting those workshops. I know the kids and it's, it's more of a ripple effect too, right? When you have like a kid knows what he's doing, maybe he, he have, he would inspire his friends or uh, kids in his classroom and have them also, okay, let's, let's eat more good stuff. Like the peer mm-hmm. thing comes into picture there too. Oh so, yeah. Yeah. You hit that's, the nail that's a really on the head. Thing. I, I really, really wish that that would have a ripple effect because I know peer pressure goes a long way for these kids. So I, I you know, I've got a, I've got a teenager. She's, she's going to be in high school now. Oh, and I know how it works with them. It's, you know, if the kids yeah. keep reaching out to 7-Eleven for their meals and their drinks, that's what is happening. But if two people stand out and be like, I don't think so, I'm going to have that therapy. Yeah. That's why, that's yeah. what I think. Uh, you know, our profession is going to have a meaning if we can do yes. that. Empower yeah, them. totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so even like small changes here and there and giving them the power to like take charge of their health, their bodies, and then spreading that message to their friends and neighbors and everyone. So, yes. so this was, this was great. Thank you so much for sharing all these valuable tips and tricks about with kids nutrition and even health in general. Like I love the work that you're doing and uh, I would like definitely look forward to these workshops that you do and I'll be giving in all the details for your workshops uh, in the video description. So if anybody's okay. interested, do reach out to her and I'm sure you're going to have a like a fabulous time learning some new things about uh, health and nutrition and everything in between. Yes. So thank you, Shweta. This, these workshops are fun. They're fun for, you know, the kids to come in and then all the, you know, the, the whole idea for these workshops is to reach out to the parents too. So yes. these, these workshops are super fun. So I'm hoping, thank you for, you know, sharing this and, you know, giving me a platform to even talk about this. Oh, it was a pleasure. Totally. Like a- anything for health and wellness awareness. Yeah. <laughs> True, true. Yeah. So yeah, until then, uh, we'll, we'll catch up again with uh, yet another episode on uh, a different topic uh, that we'll be touching upon. Uh, till then, uh, keep watching and uh, stay healthy, stay happy, stay, stay home and take care of yourself. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.